This how-to video on the NIDAS Personal Planning Registry is about creating your account and making a registration. The Personal Planning Registry is operated by the NIDAS Personal Planning Resource Centre, a non-profit charitable organization. The term NIDAS is Latin for nest, a symbol of support and safety. The registry is for a variety of items, including legal documents related to personal planning. If you have questions about making, revoking, changing, or using a legal personal planning document, go to the Resource Center at www.nidus.ca. You'll find lots of self-help resources on the Resource Center website. You can also book an appointment for personal help. The registry is a service for storing information and documents and making them accessible to others. It does not answer questions about the validity of your documents or how to use them. Go to the Resource Centre for information and help. We're going to create a registry account and make a registration and we're going to start at this link. Here we are at the NIDAS Resource Centre website and the Registry tab. And we're starting here because this is where you'll find important notices or alerts about the registry, information on new features, links to the how-to videos, and other helpful tips and details. And in terms of creating an account, this is where you'll find information on how to check for an existing account. It's very important that there's only one registry account per person in order to benefit from the registry service. So this has the instructions on how to check in case there might already be an account in place before you create one. And you'll find a link to the online registry and that's where we want to go because we're ready to create an account. Here we are at the registry homepage and it opened in a new window tab on your internet browser. We want to create an account and that's where and that's where we'll go here at the top and this is for self-registration. Lawyers and notaries public can register for their clients. They'll do that as registration agents down here, not under Create Your Account. That is for self-registration. I'm going to scroll down and just show you the links in the footer here. These are on every registry uh, web page and you can click those links to read more information, for example, about the fees. Although it's not listed, the uh, how-to videos are found also at these links. So if you click on one of these links, you'll find a menu that includes the how-to videos. Okay, let's create an account. You'll notice there's a progress bar at the top of the page here and that lets us know where we are in the process of creating our account. On the right hand side are tips. We often don't read tips until we have a problem, but they do provide a lot of information. So I would encourage you to have a look. And the first thing we want to do is enter our name. This name, uh, the name of this person, they're called the account holder. So this is the person who the registration is for. And I'm going to be Sylvia. That's my first name and my last name is Star. I don't have a middle name, but I do have a common name. Some people call it a nickname. That I, that's the name I go by and my friends call me and I have to enter an email address and I have to 
create a password according to the rules here. And that password is used for signing into my account later. I enter it twice to make sure I've done it correctly. If I use another name, perhaps for business purposes, I could click on this link here at the bottom and enter an also known as name. I don't have one, so I'm not going to do that. I must check the box that I accept the terms and conditions of the registry service and I could click on this link and read about it or I may have read about it previously from this link here in the footer. The next checkbox is saying yes, send me an email that I can sign up for a reminder to review my registration so I could get a email once a year just reminding me to review the information in my registry account. We often forget to do those things even though we know it's a good thing to do. And I could check this box to say please send me an email so I can sign up for news and updates from NIDAS and the registry. And again with those last two items you can change your mind, uh, unsubscribe at any time. So we're going to click Next and we're at the second step and this is where we're going to enter contact information for the account holder. So Sylvia's address and the NIDAS personal planning registry is for British Columbians so that's already filled in. and her phone number. We would only check this box that the address or phone is for a contact person if Sylvia was homeless. Sylvia is not homeless but if she where perhaps she'd had a serious stroke and she's in hospital and she's been there for some time. We haven't been able to arrange a new placement, new living arrangement, but we had to let her apartment go or her house has been sold or being sold and we don't know the new address, uh, her new residence. So in that case, uh, we would possibly enter the representative's uh, contact information, the representative she pointed in her representation agreement. The account is still going to be in Sylvia's name because it's about her, but we'll put the contact in, uh, information will be for someone else. As soon as Sylvia gets settled in a new place, then we will update this information because this is helps identify Sylvie as the right person belonging to this registry account. It's not that we're going to write her a letter, it helps to make sure we have the right person. So you do want to keep that up to date. We're going to click Next and now we're at the page where we will enter personal identifiers. Again, these are Sylvie's personal identifiers and date of birth is, the, uh, is an option so we're going to put that in. We have to put in at least two personal identifiers and we have a mm, there we are. <laughs> Oops. So February 17th 1954 <clears throat> We have to have at least uh, two identifiers. The date of birth is not unique. Whoops, something happened there. Um, the, so we need to put in other identifiers which are unique to the person. So I'm going to enter the care card number. and the driver's license. The more identifiers you enter the better because then we can match up the record. 
The BC identification number is used for people who don't have a driver's license or perhaps have given up their driver's license. So that hasn't happened yet for Sylvie. So Once you have the identifiers entered, you'll press Next. And here we are at the Verify step. And this is the step where you proofread what you've entered. Most information can be corrected later. However, the name of the account holder cannot. Only the registrar can correct that later and there'll be a fee. So make sure the name is spelled correctly. You could add the middle name later, but any names that are entered must be correct. The email address can be changed later, updated, but it's very important to have an email address that's working so that you'll get confirmation of registration that it'll go to this email address. So I'm just having a look. If something's not correct or you want to correct it, so oh, I put a capital V, I'm picky, I'm going to go in and fix that. I click on Edit and then I can go and correct the information. Click Next and then I get to review it again. So I'm ready to submit and this is the last step in creating our account. Yay, we've created an account. However, we must make a registration or the account will be lost. So if we don't continue to make a registration, then uh, we haven't set up a permanent account. So I click on go to my account. Here we are. Welcome, Sylvia and here are the registration options. And there's another video that discusses these options. We're going to register a representation agreement. So I'm going to click on that. And here we have our progress bar that shows us the steps in registering the representation agreement. Now you have to have made the representation agreement or other legal personal planning documents first. Signed and witnessed them and then you can register information about them. So I'm going to have, I've got my representation agreement in front of me and I'm going to check to see what is the date that the document was signed because I'm going to enter that information in here and I did that in May 30th and then I can say where the location of the original where am I keeping the original well I'm going to keep it at home with me if I move or I decide to give it to someone else for safekeeping, I can change that information. And uh, this is very helpful. Lots of people forget where they put their originals and it's a real scramble. This information is optional, but Again, it's really helpful to us and can be helpful for others. And I can put in more specifics, like it's in the third drawer of the China cabinet. Now we're at the section where we decide who may access the information that is being typed in and that's going to depend on what your document covers. So if we look at Sylvie's representation agreement, it 
covers health and personal care uh, authorities. It does not include financial and legal authorities, so we're going to tick allow health and personal type of institutions, which would include a hospital, that they would be able to find this information and other information I'm going to type in. The, uh, we have the option of uploading a copy of the completed representation agreement which is very handy because it speeds up communication. But we have to have it scanned as a PDF file in PDF format. So you take your completed document and scan it in that format. Not as single pages, it has to be all the pages in one document, one file. If you don't have that done yet, just click later, you can upload a copy of the document for an existing registration later at no extra cost. There's no additional fee. So if, if you're not sure or you haven't done it yet, just tick later. Sylvia's got it done and it, she's got it ready to go. So we're going to click now and you'll see that uh, there are uh, some other fields that opened up here. The first thing we got to do is find the file and attach it. So we click the browse button and then uh, in this case we're lucky because it enter, uh, opened up rather um, in a, the folder where we have uh, Sylvia docs to register and it looks like she's got uh, some a few things to register but we're interested in the representation agreement so we click on that and we see the name there representation agreement we click open and it's here beside the browse button representation agreement Sylvia star then we can decide if we would like the health and personal type of institutions to also be able to see this document that we're uploading. Sylvie says, yes, I want them to be able to see it. It speeds up communication. Uh, they can uh, print it, put it in the chart, for example, uh, at the hospital, and uh, things are ready to go. So we'll click on Next and you'll see that it's connecting here to the next page. It sometimes takes a few seconds because it has to upload the document. And here we are at the next step where we can enter names and information about the people we appointed in the document. And this pop-up is letting us know that this is the only opportunity to enter the names of our appointees. Uh, we can enter contact information later, but this is our only chance to enter the names of the people we appointed. So again, you've got the agreement beside you and you enter the name of the representative. You can enter their email address. Well, it's the representative is a spouse, so it's got the same address, uh, email address, and the same phone number. Although they might also have a cell number, other number. Phone numbers are going to be handy for contacting representatives. And again, the address just helps us know it's the right person. Now, of course, a representative could live anywhere. And uh, this drop down here lets you choose the uh, province or um, state and the drop down here is for 
choosing the country. In this case, because it's a spouse, they've got the same address. Now, I'm looking at the representation agreement and there's an alternate representative. So you need to be careful that you put the names with the right role. Some agreements might have two representatives uh, or more and then they would you would click this button. In this case Sylvie has an alternate representative so we'll enter that information here. Don't know her email address so I can add that later. And Now the alternate is Sylvie's niece and she happens to live in the same city which is very handy but again if not uh, they live in another province uh, or country you can use those drop down menus to choose. Okay, that's all we have for this particular representation agreement. So I'm clicking Next. And then I'm going to come to our Verify step again, which is where we want to carefully check the information that we've entered. A lot of this information can be changed later. What you cannot change later is the date the document was signed. So do double check that that date is correct. If you made a mistake, you'll have to contact the registrar and there'll be a fee for making those changes. The other fields that cannot be changed are the names of your appointees. So double check that you spelled them correctly and that they are in the correct role. So we have Brian is the rep Brian Orion is the representative. Lyra Star is the alternate. So that looks right. If it, I noticed that I accidentally uploaded the wrong file, maybe I uploaded my uh, favorite chicken recipe <laughs> instead of the representation agreement, I could remove that here. I could just put a checkbox, uh, a check in the box, and when I click submit down here, it will not upload the wrong file and then I can go in later and upload the correct one. So everything looks good. If it doesn't, I click edit here and fix it, but I'm ready to submit. Now I'm at the payment page and this pop-up is just letting you know that you need to register one document at a time. So I mentioned that Sylvie had a few things ready but she does one at a time. Setting up the account and the first registration costs $25. Additional documents are $10 each. And you would click on the link here for PayPal to use your credit debit card. You do not need a PayPal account, but you'll click on this link. For testing purposes, I'm using a coupon number. And here we are, after we've paid, we come to the confirmation page. You can print this page. You will get this information sent to the email address that you entered when you created your account. That's why it was very important to make sure you had a working email address. And what you'll notice here is that you have a NIDUS ID. So Sylvia's NIDUS ID is 2942048. And that's, she will use that 
and her password that she created uh, at the beginning to sign back into her account. But we can return to the account from this link here on the right hand side. So let's go and have a look and we'll see that under current registrations Sylvie has her representation agreement. There it is. And if you look over here on, on the right hand, top right hand side, my account info, there's a link to download a wallet card. And if you click on the link, you will be able to print the wallet card. There's two on a page and it will have the NIDUS ID, which again is displayed here, 29420048, and it will have uh, Sylvia's name and she can laminate that wallet card, keep it in her wallet, uh, copy in every purse. You can make as many copies as you want and this link stays here so if you lose your wallet card you can make another one. So we could register another document if we want or if we're finished for now we can log out. It's important to log out that's part of the security measures so we're going to log out and we return to the registry homepage. Thank you for watching.